the maxillary posterior teeth must be carefully positioned to maintain maximum occlusal contact with the lower teeth, not only in the intercuspal position, but also during lateral and protrusive functional movements. To achieve this objective, the teeth are arranged so that their cusps form a series of compensating curves. These curves consist of an anteroposterior compensating curve, analogous to the curve of spay observed in the natural dentition, and a lateral compensating curve or curve of Monson. The procedure for setting up the posterior teeth is similar to that employed for the anteriors in that the relevant area of wax is softened as a precursor to tooth positioning. The line diagram shows the desired position of the first premolar. The dotted line represents the palatal cusp indicating that it is sighted approximately one millimeter above the occlusal plane. All of the posterior teeth, without exception, are positioned slightly buckled to the midline of the residual ridge. The second premolar is positioned so that its long axis is parallel to that of the first premolar. However, both cusps of the tooth must be in contact with the occlusal plane. The first molar is positioned and adjusted so that only the mesiopalatal cusp contacts the occlusal plane. Posteriorly to this point, both anteroposterior and lateral compensating curves begin to develop. The line diagram shows that the mesiobuccal, distobuccal and distolingual cusps are not in contact with the occlusal plane. The second molar is set up so that all of its cusps are free of the occlusal plane when viewed from the side. All four cusps can be seen in confirmation with the development of the lateral compensating curve, as displayed in this line diagram. And here we see a definite development of the compensating curve. Looking at this view, the buccal surfaces of the posterior teeth from the canine to the mesiobuccal cusp of the first molar lie on a straight line. Another line also joins all four buccal cusps of the molars, indicating that the teeth are correctly placed relative to the underlying ridge. It is also possible to illustrate this tooth positioning by placing a steel rule against the denture teeth. We can now clearly see the anteroposterior compensating curve. And the lateral compensating curve.
Once the opposite side of the denture has been set up, the lower occlusal rim is removed and replaced with a base plate and wire strengthener. A small roll of wax is then softened, positioned and looted into place. The first tooth to be positioned is the mandibular first molar. It is placed into maximum intercuspation and adjusted for balanced articulation. Both lateral and protrusive movements are made to establish working, non-working and protrusive balancing contacts. All of these functional movements must take place with the incisal guidance post in contact with the table. This protrusive movement or rearward movement of the upper member of the articulator shows the mesial cuspal inclines of the lower teeth sliding against the distal of the upper posterior teeth. The mandibular second premolar is positioned mesially to that of the first molar. An identical procedure is then followed. Again we see the simulated functional movements being made, resulting in non-working, working, and protrusive contacts. The same procedure is followed when setting up the second mandibular molar. And finally, the first premolar. Note also that the mandibular teeth are positioned in line over the center of the residual ridge. The principle of balanced occlusion may best be illustrated in graphical form to show lateral balance displaying both working and non-working contacts, and in protrusive movement how the distal cuspal inclines of the upper posterior teeth slide against the mesial cuspal inclines of their lower counterparts. Note also that when the mandible is in its protrusive cusp to cusp contact that the incisal edges of the anterior teeth are also coincident. Here again we see this concept of occlusal balance applied to the dentures, displayed in both protrusive and lateral excursion. Constant contact must be maintained with the post and incisal guidance table during the execution of these movements. With both sides of the mandibular posterior teeth sighted in occlusal balance, the final phase of setting up involves positioning of the anterior mandibular teeth. In this particular case, the patient's left central, lateral and canine have been positioned. The final step involves the placement of the right mandibular central incisor.
which is followed by the lateral incisor. And finally, the canine. The lateral and protrusive movements are made to ensure that simulated contacts are established and maintained without cuspal interference, with continuous contact and fluid movement of the incisal guidance post over the incisal table. The incisal guidance post is now removed to facilitate a closer inspection of the anterior tooth position. To ensure the stability and function of a complete set of dentures, it is essential that the posterior teeth be positioned in relation to the midline of the lower residual ridge. Here we see the midline indicated with the aid of pencil marks drawn on the land area of the lower cast so as to facilitate the comparison with the residual ridge when the denture is in situ. And here we can clearly see the posterior teeth positioned so that the longitudinal fossae of the teeth are set up coincident with the midline. Note also that the anterior teeth are also set up in relation to the midline of the ridge. The maxillary posterior teeth are set up similarly, but with one very important difference. The position of the midline of the residual ridge is again indicated. However, the palatal cusps of the posterior teeth are coincident with the midline. The upper anterior tooth position was dictated by the anterior prescription of the upper occlusal rim. In certain circumstances, the clinician may indicate the desired positioning of the posterior teeth by adjusting the occlusal rims.